The Discovery, Chapter 2, From a Certain Point of View Just one more hour, just one more measly hour. Midnight Shadow just stared listlessly at the clock on her desk. This was the fifth time in just as many minutes that she had looked at it while filing out paperwork. Her job required her to work long hours into the night and early morning. Not something that she was unused to at this point, but boring as hell all the same. The room was dimly lit by a sapphire glow emanating from her horn and the pencil that she was currently levitating. The only noise reverberating through the air being the constant tick-tock of the clock on the desk, and the little scribbling sound of the pencil on the hundredth piece of paper to litter Midnight's desk. She sighed and leaned back into her chair, her vertebrae popping half a dozen times as she relieved the pressure and tension from her back after sitting behind a desk all night. Ugh, I need a break. I hate paperwork. Midnight whispered to no one in particular. Yawning sharply, she released her magic hold on the pencil and turned away from the desk. She rose from her lumbago-inducing prison and dropped to her hooves. Arching her back and stretching like a cat, Midnight felt several more joints pop and crack as more and more tension was released from her body. Stifling another yawn, Midnight started for the door, stealing one more glance at the clock on her desk. The echoing clip-clop of her hooves on the hard floor filled the air as she walked. Great, 4 a.m. Maybe I should just turn in early, not how much more of the second take tonight. Why did I take this night guard gig? Walking out through the door from her office, Midnight swiveled her head to the right. No one. Then to the left. No one. The coast is clear, but then again it was always clear this late or early depending on the pony. The only ponies awake at this hour were the Thestrals and Princess Luna, and Midnight hardly worked with either. Even so, if there were any mulling about, her little game of hooky would not go over well. Midnight walked back into her private office and quickly filed her paperwork, ensuring the classified material was properly secured before moving on to more trivial paperwork. Once her desk was clear, she moved back to the door and checked one more time to ensure the coast was clear. Midnight welled her horn to glow and her familiar blue aura encapsulated the keys sitting idly on the far end of the desk. She levitated the keys over to her waiting hoof, her magic then grabbing the door and gently pulling it closed. She placed the key into the lock and twisted it until there was an audible click, signifying the door was secured. She walked over to the far side of the main office, where her saddlebags and hers alone were sitting unattended. They seemed so small, compared to the emptiness of the room around them. She opened the pouch and slid her keys inside. She then drew out the only other item in the bag, a thick winter scarf, and wrapped it around her neck. It wasn't particularly freezing yet. Winter had yet to hit in full swing, but fall was quickly ending and the outside air was fairly chilly in the late night and early morning. As she levitated her saddlebags onto her back, midnight made for the door. She ensured that the office was properly cleaned and empty with one more glance before closing the door behind her and locking it. The brisk chill of early winter hit her immediately, and she shivered at the initial feeling. Finding no pleasure in the cold, she couldn't help but consider going back inside the complex. However, knowing fully well why she came outside in the first place, she started walking away from the building, quickly scanning left and right for any ponies that would see her ditching work. She was a dedicated mare, yes, but even the most dedicated of individuals could play hooky once in a while. Midnight was no exception. Seeing no ponies nearby, or at all for that matter, she walked down the road into Canterlot's central district. The city was quiet, with all but a few lights flickering and the few stores still manned for any potential Thestral customers or the occasional early riser. Midnight found no reason to stick around in this area, so she turned to follow the road leading into Canterlot Residential District. Midnight found herself walking through the upper-class neighborhoods of Canterlot often. It was pretty much the only way that she could get to work on time every day. She hated it. Every snob and upper-class pony this side of Equestria crammed into one square mile of arrogance and narcissism. Wanting to get home as fast as possible, Midnight walked faster, breaking into a trot trying to create as much distance between her and the snobs as physically possible. Midnight soon slowed to a normal walking pace as she entered Canterlot proper and entered the countryside. Waving at the guard station at the gate, she continued down the road, finally finding some relaxation in the sound of the soft whistling of the breeze as it gently caressed to the mountainside. The forest flanking both sides of the road were scary to most at night, but to midnight they were relaxing. As she continued her walk, she checked the watch on her forehoof. 4.47 a.m. Awesome! I might just make it home before five for once! She cheered in her head. Finding a new bounce in her step, Midnight happily trotted along the path towards her house. Rounding the corner at the bottom of the road, she continued walking along the well-beaten path into the countryside. She didn't hate the city, but she found much more solace in the peace and quiet one could only find a fair distance away from any pony else. The soft breeze filled her mane and fur, breathing a feeling of relaxation into her. Memories of when she used to play tag with her dad in the mountains as the breeze washed over her filled her head. Midnight followed the road for a few hundred more feet and finally saw her house silhouetted against the countryside. 
Holding back her excitement, she made her way to the door, thankful that her little game of hooky went unnoticed by any spying eyes that might have still been at work. Midnight reached into her saddlebags for her keys, but paused when she heard a faint rumbling. Turning around, she couldn't make anything out other than the garden in front of her house and the road leading back into Canterlot. Midnight began to worry, as the rumbling only got louder and louder. Looking left and right, she couldn't identify the source of the noise. What is that noise? Where is it coming from? Midnight barely finished her sentence as her gaze turned skyward and saw a terrific sight. The most beautiful meteorite shower she had ever seen. Thousands upon thousands of lights danced through the sky and brilliant flashes illuminated the dark world. The display was as marvelous as it was bright and getting closer. Midnight squinted her eyes to be sure if what she was seeing was real. Most of the specks had flashed brightly, then burned out, but one was getting bigger. Why is that- Midnight started, but was interrupted by the rumbling turning into a thundering. Her body began to shake as it got louder and louder. Her eyes went wide, and before she could react, it turned into a screeching. The sound was louder than anything that she had ever heard. She pressed her hoofs against her ears as they splayed back against her skull. She barely caught sight of the bright screeching monster that rocketed downwards through the sky into the mountainside. Midnight stared, slack-jawed at the sight as the last of it disappeared behind a cliff. The sound of rocks and trees now being obliterated filled the air. Midnight dropped her saddlebags and charged into a full gallop towards the mountainside, her scarf blowing into the wind as she moved. Only one thought filled her mind. That was more than just a shooting star. Ten minutes later, Midnight reached the edge of the cliff to find a sight of pure destruction in front of her. Jagged, twisted metal jutted out of the deformed rock face at odd angles, sending shivers down her spine. Trees were snapped clean in half, the splintered remains all but stumps compared to their untouched brothers. There was a deep trench carved into the side of the mountain. All along the desecrated path were small fires and more twisted metal. Looking further down the trench, Midnight saw bigger fires and smoke billowing from the bottom of the cliffside. Preparing for the many possible circumstances running through her head, she readied herself for the trip down. Taking a deep breath, she began the slow journey down the cliff to find whatever it was that had smashed into the mountain. After five minutes of climbing, Midnight saw something promising. Is that a piece of... glass? Midnight approached the damaged piece and inspected it closely. It was attached to some kind of metal, with screws and bolts running through the glass into the unique backing. There seemed to be some kind of wires sticking out of the side. It looked like whatever it had been ripped clean off the side of whatever had crashed here. Putting it to the side, she continued her descent into the unknown, intending to study the glass later. The descent was unbelievably long. Midnight descended a full 300 feet, finding strange new debris and objects of interest, before she was even close to the source of the destruction. She finally found a small cliff to rest on where a glowing blaze below caught her attention, and she directed her eyes to the source. With smoke billowing out of the side and front, a giant metallic tube lay at the base of the cliffside, looking every bit as guilty of the carnage as a mutilated piece of metal could look. Midnight stepped closer to the edge of the cliff as she eyed the wreckage more carefully. Something was... off. The side of the tube was billowing with smoke, but part of it seemed to be missing. There was a hole in the side of the tube that strangely resembled a large doorway. As she looked more closely, she saw more of the metal laying next to the tube, looking just as burnt as the inside truly was. That was it then. That was a door, and if that thing had a door, then there had to be something inside that door. Sweet Luna, is that an alien spaceship? Midnight gasped. Scanning the area for more details, her eyes fell on a trail of a very familiar-looking fluid leading away from the ship. Even in the low light tainted by the harsh Titian glow emanating from the craft and surrounding fires, Midnight could only identify it as blood. Following the trail with her eyes, she couldn't help but feel her heart pound in her chest as they neared the end. Five feet? Ten feet? Fifteen feet. Midnight felt her breath catch in her throat. Her jaw dropped and goosebumps rose all over her body. Sitting there not twenty feet from the craft, she saw the alien laying against a small tree, with a puddle of blood forming around its body. Her heart nearly stopped when she saw that the creature was staring straight at her. She made eye contact with it. A pit formed in her stomach, immediately making her feel sick. I knew that was more than just a shooting star. Midnight whispered. The creature's head slowly tilted to the side as it appeared to lose consciousness, and fall over onto its side, leaving Midnight to stare at the dying alien life form now on her planet. She cautiously trotted down the last bit of the cliff to the crash site and the strange creature. Every fiber of her being screamed at her to run and get the Royal Guard. There was no telling what this thing was capable of. It could explode? It could eat her? It could abduct her and experiment on her? There was no telling. But Midnight couldn't just let it die. She'd never been able to sit idly by and watch something die. She cautiously walked forward, the billowing smoke obscuring the doorway of the ship and filling the air with a strange musk somewhere between a bonfire and a funeral pyre. 
Making her way past the ship, she found herself slowing to a crawl. There it was, the alien that crashed here not 20 minutes ago. The only sign that it was still alive was the slow and weak breaths coming from its barely moving chest. Each step forward felt like it took ages to complete. Fear screamed at midnight to abandon the creature and get the night guard, only the creature looked far too wounded. Going to get the guard would take too much time, and the night guard was too small and limited to send any pony out of Canterlot and the royal guard was off duty for at least another hour. By the time they got here, this thing could be long dead. No, she had to help it. There was no way that she could let it die. Who knows what information it could know. Obviously it had the technology to fly through space, it could know so much more. Just saying this for the shits and giggles, they're probably gonna fog. This is just coming a mile away. If they don't, that's shocking. Anyway, moving on, let's get on to our advanced donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mortred, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Hudzaza, Riot Soul, Dospo, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.